Hi there and welcome to the second video in this series where we build a Python command line application to fetch images from NASA's APIs. In the first video we built two very simple commands as you can see here. We're going to get rid of those just now and what we're going to do is we're going to actually build the commands to fetch the images from NASA's API. Now what you need to do first is you need to fetch an API key and this is the one I've got which I will be deleting after these videos and you can get these from NASA's website. This link will be in the description and you can generate the API key here and they'll email you that key. Now the API that we're going to use is the APOD or Astronomy Picture of the Day API and we can use that to get images from a given date from NASA. Now what we can do here is you can see the, the base URL for this API. This matches what's in our configs uh, API URL. You see we have this here, that's the base URL defined on NASA's site and we add a query parameter to that which attaches an API key to the URL and if we scroll down a little bit you see that's the structure of this example query we've got here to this API and there are some other query parameters that we're going to attach um, notably the date, the start date and the end date. We're going to use all of these in the next few videos for now we're just going to focus on getting the single image for a given date and in the next video we'll look at a range of dates between a start and an end. And we can see what kind of API response we get by clicking on this example query here. And if we open that in a, another tab you see that we get some JSON data back and one of the fields that we're going to look at is the URL field which gives you a URL to the actual astronomy image of the day. So if we click this here we get a particular image for the given day and by default it will be today and that is the image for today. So what we're going to do is we're going to send an initial request to this API here. We're going to get back this JSON and then we're going to extract the URL from that JSON and send another request to get the image and then we'll show the image on the user's desktop. So let's get started with the code. So if I go to VS Code what I'm going to do is go to main.py and that's where we define our typer commands. And we're going to have to import a few libraries here. First of all, let's import the requests library and you use that to send HTTP requests. And that's what we're going to use. We're going to use that to send requests to our API URL, which we're going to have to bring in from the config module. So from config import API URL. We're also going to bring in the image object from the Python imaging library. So from pill import image. And finally, from I.O., I'll just put this at the top, from I.O., import Bytes.io. And I'll explain why we need Bytes.io uh, a little bit later on. So what we're going to do now is actually define the typer command. So we'll use that same app.command decorator that we defined or we saw earlier. And we're going to call this particular command fetch image. And it's going to take in a date, which will be of t type date time. And it's going to default to the current date that we set up in the first video. So this will fetch an image from NASA's API for whatever the date provided by the user is or for the current date by default. So now let's print a statement saying fetching or rather sending API request. So we're going to give the user some feedback when they execute this command. Now we can actually um, start fetching the image for the given date. Now we need to attach as you can see from NASA here we need to attach a query parameter to the URL called date and that's got to be in that particular format there so let's go ahead and make that format just now so we'll say DT to stand for date and we're going to stringify the date time object that we get as a parameter here we're going to stringify its date so that will take the date time object it will convert it to a date or it will extract only the date uh, components and then it will turn that into a string and remember the date comes in in the correct format that NASA wants so that's exactly what we need here. So once we have that date object I'm going to create another variable called URL for the date and that's going to be an F string where we take our API URL and we add to that API URL another query parameter called date and we set that equal to DT. So that will take the base URL for the API which comes from config and it's going to add to it that date query parameter that NASA's API expects. And once we have that, we can actually get a response object and we'll 
use the requests module to do a get request to the, that URL there. So that should return the JSON data that you see on this page here. So let's now print that out to the terminal. So if I, we can use the typer.echo command and we can echo the response.content to the terminal. So if I run this now, um, and we can do that with python main.py, that should get the image of the day for the current day. And you see that we get um, some JSON data back here and it's printed out to the terminal. So we're getting that response. And what we want to extract is the URL from that response to begin with. And at this stage, we'll, we'll do a quick check using the requests library. We're going to say response.raise for status. That's a function. And what that's going to do is it's going to stop the script on an error. So if it's not a 200 response, this will raise an exception. So now if we go below that, we can actually extract the URL. So I'm going to create a variable called URL and it's going to be response.json and that will be the URL key that we see down here at the bottom. Response.json will turn the uh, the response into a dictionary, a Python dictionary, and then we can extract the URL key from that dictionary. So when we have the URL, what we can do is I'm going to print a bit more feedback to the user, and that's going to say fetching image. So at this stage, what we've got, um, we've sent the initial API request, we've got back the JSON response, and now we're going to actually send another request to this URL to fetch the astronomy image of the day. So to do that, we'll set a, a variable called image response. And again, it's using the requests.get function, and we're gonna send that to the URL that we got from the JSON data. Now this should return um, a, a response containing the image as a bytes object in Python. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna convert this to a Python imaging library image object. Now we imported this image construct up here. So what we can do is we can get the bytes from response.content, and I'm gonna pass that to the bytes IO and that's going to take in as a file-like object the, the bytes data. And because it's a file-like object, we can call the pillow modules open method. So we open that bytes IO object and that stores a pillow image object into that variable there. And it's very simple to show a pillow image object on the user's desktop. We simply call image.show. So if I now run this, uh, we should get an image showing up on the screen. And if we expand this here, we see it's an unidentified image error. Um, so let's have a look at what's going on here. So the bytes.io object, it's taking in response.content. This should be image response.content. So if I try this again, hopefully this will work. You can see it's fetching the image now and it shows up on my, uh, my computer here. We see the astronomy image of the day for that given date, which is today by default. If we provide a date argument, so if I say uh, yesterday's astronomy image of the day, we should see a different image will appear on our desktop and we get a different image of the day here. So that's quite cool. We now have a Python command line application that can fetch the astronomy image of the day for any date using um, using the terminal command that we define using typer. And we can actually put in dates from the past as well, quite a bit years ago, so 2015, that'll fetch the image from that given date there. That's the astronomy image of the day for the 21st of November, 2015. So that covers how to fetch the image and show it on the computer's desktop. We want to add one more flag to this script now. We want to give the user the ability to save the image to their local file system. So what I'm going to do is add a second argument to the typer function that we've got as a command here. And that second argument is going to be a parameter called save, which is a boolean that defaults to false. So by default, it will not save it to the file system but you can specify um, that it should do so. So we'll save that, and what I want to do is now use the pathlib library to actually set up an image directory, and I'm gonna do this in the config.py file. So from pathlib, I will import the path object, and what I'm going to do is set a, another config object here called imageDir, and that's gonna be the current directory, and we'll set an images directory within this current directory, which currently doesn't exist, so we're going to need to account for that in our command. So if I go back to uh, main.py here, at the bottom, after we call image.show, I'm going to add code that will save the image to the file system, but we should only do this if the save flag is set to true. Now, from our config, I'm also going to import the image directory to do this. And 
below image.show, we'll have an if statement here that says if save, if that's set to true, we're going to check if the image directory exists. So if it doesn't exist rather, if not image dot exists. And this is a pathlib object here, um, which has a function called exists that you can use to check if that exists. If it doesn't exist, we're going to actually create that. And we're going to use the OS module, uh, which has a function called make directory, make dir. And we can pass the image directory object into that. If the image directory doesn't exist, this will create it within our local directory. So once the image is safely, or once the directory is safely created, what we can do is we can call the pillow image.save function. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this to the image directory and I'm going to set up a variable called image name in a second. And the second parameter to the image.save method should be the format. Now the format is available in Pillow. An image object such as this one has a format uh, attribute that you can access. So we now just need to set up this image name here. So I'm going to do that now. The image name is going to be equal to the title of the image. So if you look at the JSON response that you get back here, you actually get a title. So we need to extract that title from our original JSON response. So I'm going to do that up here. Title equals, and let's just say data here, data title. And I'm going to set um, a data variable here that's equal to the response.json object, just so we don't have to repeat that. And then we can extract um, the data URL and the title from that. So the title is what we're going to use to set an image name here. So an F string here, it's going to be title. And the extension is going to be another part of this F string. It's going to be the image dot format. So for example, PNG or JPEG is going to be the format. So that will save the image as title dot JPEG, whatever the title might be to our local directory. So let's test this out and see if it works. I'm going to expand this and we'll run the same uh, command here for 2015. You can see that it shows up on our um, on our page here. If I shut that down, nothing's happening because I haven't set the save flag. So let's try and do that now. And there's one final step I want to do actually. I want to make sure that the image is closed just so that there's no memory leaks or anything. So at the end of the command, you can call the pillow image.close method. So to save the image to the file system, what we need to do is make sure the save flag is set to true. So to do that, we simply do our last command there and we can add a dash dash save flag to that. And that should set this to true. It's that easy in Typer. All we need to do is set it to true. Now the image shows up here, as you can see, but also you can see that an images directory has been created here and that it contains one image within it. And that is because we've created the directory within this if statement here. And um, we create the directory with these two lines. And then once the directory is created, we save the image to that directory by using the pillow image.save function. So if we open that up, you see that we get the image from that date. And if I was to set another date here, let's just go for the current image from today. That's going to open that up. Um, but you see another image appears in the directory and you can do this for any date you want. And in the next video, we're going to extend this to allow the user to fetch images between a range of dates, let's say for a whole year if you want, and it's going to save all of those images into this images directory. So that covers everything I want to show you in this video. If we take a step back and look at what we've done here, we've created a command using Typer, and it's a fetch image command that fetches an image from NASA's API, and it does this using the requests module to send get requests to NASA. When it receives a JSON response, it extracts the URL for, for the image from that response and it extracts the image's title. And then it sends a second request to the URL containing the image. And when it receives that image as bytes data, it creates a bytes IO object. And then from that, it opens up a pillow image object. And once you have an image object in pillow, what you can do is you can show that image on the user's desktop and you can also obviously close that image at the end, but you can also save that image to a particular directory or location on the file system as we do here. We also have this save flag that we've added here, which allows the user to specify whether or not they want the image to be saved to their local file system. So Typer is very good for allowing you to type hint these variables, these arguments, and have particular behaviors created because of it. it's very easy in Pythonic 
and I think Typer is an amazing library, it's very useful. In the next video we're going to extend this example even further to fetch a range of images. There will be a blog post for this video as well and if you've enjoyed the video please do like and subscribe and leave any feedback you have in the comments. Thank you for watching.